Hello and welcome back. Today I'm talking through a really simple tool to help you understand and carry out emotional regulation. It's called the window of tolerance and you can use it with anyone of any age. You might want to adapt the language a bit if you're using it with tinies, but generally I find that they can understand it pretty well. Okay, so the window of tolerance works on the basis that um, every day, each and every one of us, our kind of our mood, our feeling, and how how things are going is kind of always going up and down and up and down and up and down. That can be due to internal factors, so things that are happening with us, sort of um, anxieties, hormones, different stuff going on inside. Um, it could be stuff that's going on externally, so a conversation you have with someone, feedback you get about something, traffic jam, I mean, all sorts of different things. So there are different different things that can impact on how we're thinking and how we're feeling um, and those can be both positive and negative. Now what our aim is each day is where possible and it's not always possible we want to try and stay within our window of tolerance so we're going up and down and up and down but we're trying to stay in the optimal zone so we're trying not to shoot up through the top which is what we call hyper arousal and that's when we tend to go into a very kind of anxious mood so that's our kind of fight or flight type response um, and we can get extremes of that or, or kind of more, more minor but so that's hyper arousal and we also want not to shoot down through the bottom which is when we go into hypo arousal um, and that is like our kind of freeze response and that's our more sort of depressive, low mood, lacking motivation type response. Now, in order to try and stay as so far as possible within our window of tolerance each day, um, there's kind of two key things we can do. One is to begin to get a better understanding of what impacts on where we are within our window of tolerance. Um, so that might mean then we're going to try and avoid things, we're going to try and manage them differently, that we might, for example, if something makes us highly anxious, that we build in a little bit of a breathing space for ourselves after that, for example. Um, and the other thing we can do is to think about how to respond quickly if we feel ourselves either tipping up out into hyperarousal or out the bottom into hypoarousal. So in order to respond bond in that way, then we're going to want to think that what works for me, or if you're working with someone else, obviously what works for them, um, in order to calm. So if we're shooting up through the top, what can I do right now in this situation that will help me to calm and try and stop me shooting up through the top there? Or if we're worried that we're going to shoot down through the bottom and go into hypo arousal, that depressed, lacking motivation, um, then we're going to think, what might help to activate? Now, this is really personal. So this isn't really one where I can just tell you the answers. You have to brainstorm it out for yourself. You need to try it out, journal it, see what works and what doesn't. Um, but some kinds of things that might work are, so for me, if I'm going into hyper arousal, which is a place I tend to go often, um, that can be because I'm getting highly anxious. Um, that might be because I find social interaction really tough. So I might do things like uh, take a break from social interaction. I might do something mindfully. I might eat mindfully drink mindfully, go for a mindful walk. Um, I might uh, do some breathing exercises. I find things like the box breathing to be really helpful. I might colour, I might stroke my dog. There's lots and lots of different things I might do to try and help me to calm if I'm feeling anxious. On the other hand, if I feel I'm dipping down into that lack of motivation where I just want to curl up and hibernate, and that also happens quite often, <laughs> um, then I would be thinking, what might activate me? Sometimes it's similar things. I tend here to think of the five senses as my first go-to. So I'm thinking about what can I do to arouse myself in terms of the senses? So um, what are things that I can, I can look at that will activate me? What are things that I can smell? Smell and taste are really great ones here. So if I'm at home, I might jump in the shower with like a lime or a mint uh, shower gel. Um, I might brush my teeth. I find the taste of mint really good. Sometimes I find things like chili good, stuff like that. Um, and then and then sound can be a good one too. Again, we can use that to, to calm if we're if we're anxious. Use calming music, or activate some kind of happy, uh, uplifting type music can really help. Like I say, it really depends on on what what works for the individual, and also you need to think about the circumstances. So, for example, if I find myself feeling highly anxious, but I'm in like a really exposed social situation, uh, for example, say I'm standing. On stage giving a keynote presentation and something's just tripping my anxiety for some reason then I need to think about what can I do right here right now that's going to have the, the least impact on me carrying on with my normal stuff and usually there it's just literally a case of me just taking a moment taking a deep breath maybe asking colleagues to discuss something for a moment or two while I gather my thoughts um, and then stepping back in. And the key thing here is that ideally we're trying to get a better understanding of where we're sitting within the window of tolerance all the time 
and to understand what are the small things that we can do that will help to nudge us in the right direction. So we're just becoming more aware really of what's going on with ourselves each day and we're taking small steps so that we can try and keep ourselves in that optimal zone so far as possible. Um, the other thing we can do longer term is to think about ways to increase our window of tolerance um, so that we're more resilient, we're more able to manage the kind of ups and downs of day to day life um, and the, there are lots of ways that we can do that um, but the, the kind of key ones here are to really think about getting our basics in place. So I always talk about the, the kind of key pillars of our mental health sitting within our physical health. Um, so we're thinking about getting good sleep, regular exercise, healthy food and if we get that right then actually everything else becomes a lot more easy to manage. So if you think about a typical day and how you respond to slightly difficult triggers within that day, if you then think about how you would respond to those triggers if you hadn't had a good night's sleep, then you begin to understand how you know being chronically sleep deprived or not having good sleep regularly can have a really big impact on our ability to manage day to day. So there you go, introduction to the window of tolerance. I hope that you found this helpful. Um, I share this a lot, so I may well have referred you to this video if I have shared this idea at a conference or a training session. Hopefully it's a good refresher and something you can share with colleagues too. Um, and it's an idea that you can really quickly understand um, and just use as part of your day-to-day -day managing for yourself um, and or using it to support others too. Simple idea, loads and loads of applications and tons of opportunities to adapt it to meet the needs of you or the person that you're working with or supporting. Good luck with it. Please leave a comment below letting me know if you've used it and how and any ideas you've got to add. Um, if you like this, give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see my other videos in future, then please take a moment to hit subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you again. Thanks so much. Bye.